Hi guys, this is Mrs. Gassler, and in this video we're going to talk about lenses, telescopes, and magnifying glasses. So, I've got some partially filled out notes here, so if you need to pause the video because I'm going too fast, please do so. Alright, so for starters, this is going to seem a little bit familiar here and there. Uh, we're going to talk about the thin lens equation first, uh, and it looks like this. This is the thin lens equation. 1 over F equals 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. And if you're thinking, hey, I've seen that before, you are right. This is the same as the mirror equation. Mirror equation. It is exactly the same as the mirror equation. The difference is the positives and negatives. Uh, they depend on the type of the lens that you're using, and it's not quite as easy as the mirror. Uh, so they depend on the lens, lens type. Okay, so let's talk about the two different lens types. We've got the converging and the diverging lens, and hopefully you remember that the converging lens is the concave lens. Uh, a converging mirror is the convex mirror. We have to be careful with that now. Uh, converging lens is uh, the convex lens, and so when you're looking at this, what you'll see is those those parallel rays let me draw with a pencil here would all come together at the focal length over here um, so that's how we know it's a converging lens <clears throat> and that has to do with how the light hits these over here and which way they turn but if we were to have an object over here say uh, and we'll talk about drawing ray diagrams later we would draw it something like this and that arrow goes to the middle and then this one goes through like this and then where those meet over here there's your object and here is your image, okay? The diverging lens is the opposite one, and so when you've got your parallel rays coming in, they end up getting spread out, and that has to do with the angle that they hit here on that first surface there. Uh, this one works, oh, this is a concave lens, this one works like the convex mirror. Um, where the light rays come in and they would go out, but we kind of trace them back this way. And this one would go that way, but we trace it back here. And so there's our image right there. So here's our object and here's our image. Oops, sorry. I'm getting a little off the screen there. Okay, so um, when we're talking about the distances and the positives and negatives, the focal length for a converging lens is always positive, and the focal length for a diverging lens is always negative. Um, and that's true of mirrors also. Um, here, the object distance whoops, is positive, and so is the object distance over here. Also true of uh, mirrors, um, but the way that we measure the uh, image distance is a little bit different. So for the image distance, it works like this. It's positive, so here, we'll put our object here. If the image is over here, then it would be positive, and if the image is over here, it would be negative. So it's gonna depend if it's on the same side of the mirror or opposite side, uh, whether or not it's the, so this would be the opposite, or same side, and this would be opposite side. So if the light goes through and you could project it, it would be a positive, and if not, then it would be a negative. Um, on the diverging lens, the image distance is always negative, so that's pretty easy to remember. Okay, so uh, if you're not sure, um, you can always refer to drawing a picture. Uh, remember that virtual images are negative uh, and that real images are positive, so I'll write virtual in there. Okay, so let's talk about those images. Um, it's pretty much always the same here. Uh, it depends, though. Uh, for a diverging lens, this is the one that's easy. These are always... Okay, it's always virtual, it's always uh, reduced, and it's always um, upright. Okay, uh, that's just the nature of a diverging lens when it makes those images. Um, it's always those things. But on a converging lens, it could be either or, uh, real or virtual, and it depends on the placement of the object over here relative to the focal length. Uh, so it could be real or virtual, it could be magnified or reduced, and it could be upright or inverted. Okay, um, so, And that depends on the placement of the object, depends on the placement of the object. Okay. 
Um, so uh, that equation is going to work just like the other ones. We'll do a quick example. Uh, we also talk about magnification here. Um, and this works just like in the mirrors also. It's di do or hi ho. That's how I remember that one. Hi ho, di do. Um, and if you end up with a negative value in here, that really just means that it's a virtual image. Okay. And um, there aren't any units to this. And if it's greater than one, that means that it's magnified. And if it's less than one, that means it's reduced. That doesn't look like a good one. Okay. Uh, because it's a multiplier. All right. So let's do an example where we use this equation. Let me move these papers out of the way. Make sure I'm still in the window here. All right. So uh, what is the image distance of an object uh, if an object is placed 30 centimeters from a convex lens with a focal length of 15 centimeters? What is the magnification? So convex lens... That's my converging lens, so this is going to be a positive focal length. So when I write down 1 over f equals do plus di, 1 over, okay, then I'm going to put in a positive 15 centimeters here. My object distance is always positive, and then di is what I'm looking for. Now this one's a little easier to work with here because I've got uh, 230s equals 130 plus uh, something, right? Uh, and hopefully that's obvious that uh, with all my 30s here, when I subtract this one, I'm going to have 1 over 30 equals 1 over di. So di must be that 30 centimeters. In fact, it happens to be the same. That was a stupid easy example. I'm, I, I apologize. I should have picked a harder one. Uh, the second part of the question says, what's the magnification? So I'm going to put in the object distance and the image distance with the image distance on top. And they were the same, 30 centimeters and 30 centimeters. Um, that means that my object magnification is 1, uh, which means they're the same size, which I did not write down up there, so maybe now you know that. Okay. All right, so up next, we're going to talk about telescopes. All right, and here's a lovely hand-drawn telescope. And I'm going to add a little bit to this picture here. Um, the way telescopes work is that this can slide in and out uh, so that you can um, change where it focuses. Uh, and this thing that's up next to your eye, by the way, that's an eye, uh, is called the eye piece. And this thing over here is called the objective lens. I don't know why, um, but that's how it is. And then you can change the length of the telescope to focus, change length, to focus the telescope. That's how they work. Um, and as you focus it, you can bring things in and out of focus or get look at something closer or farther away. Telescopes are really cool. We should have a telescope night or something, right? So uh, the way telescopes work, um, people are concerned with the magnification of the telescope. And um, using this lens equation, uh, the, the lens equation and the magnification equation, you can come up with these. Um, but it boils down to the objective lens of the, or the focal length of the objective lens and the focal length of the eyepiece will give you the magnification. So this is the objective lens, focal length, and this is the eyepiece, focal length. Okay, and so we've got a quick example here. Um, I think it came from a pirate question. So there's a pirate, and he's on the top of the little ship, and he's trying to look at stuff, and it wants to know the magnification that he'll see. Uh, it says, so how much does a telescope magnify an object if the eyepiece has a 2.0 focal length and the objective lens has an 80 centimeter focal length? Um, so we'll write the equation down. Magnification of the telescope is the objective lens divided by the eyepiece lens focal length. So we're gonna put the 80 on top, and the two on the bottom. One I can do in my head, thank goodness. Uh, so 40 is our magnification. Now if you're thinking, whoa, that's a, that's a big mag magnification, but imagine when you look at something stinking far away, it's incredibly tiny, and if you can multiply it by 40, then you might even be able to tell what it is. Uh, when you're looking at stars, um, a lot of telescopes can get into the hundreds for the magnification so that you can see all the pieces. All right, last thing we'll talk about is a magnifying glass. And I drew another picture here. Isn't that great? Okay, so uh, the magnification depends on um, something called the near point. And the near point is basically how far you have to hold the magnifying glass from your eye to be able to see things. And the near point can change based on how old you are and how good your eyes are. Um, but we're going to approximate it at 25 centimeters unless it tells you otherwise. 
uh, or you're trying to find that. Um, and then it also depends on the distance of the object. And so we're comparing to with no lens in between. So the magnification of uh, a magnifying glass is going to be the near point divided by the object distance. And that's going to come from that lens equation also, but uh, we won't talk about that. And so we have an example here. So let me label this. That's the near point. Okay, so this will, this will always be 25 centimeters over the object distance, unless it's otherwise stated. Okay, so here's our example. What is the magnification of a coin if a coin is held 5 centimeters behind a magnifying glass? Uh, and then what if it's 2 centimeters? So we'll write down the equation here. Near point divided by the object distance. So 25 centimeters is the near point, even though it doesn't say it in the question. That's what I'm going to assume. Uh, and then it's five centimeters away. Um, so that gives me a magnification of five. And if it's only two centimeters away, then I would get um, an even greater magnification. So it'll be 12.5, okay? Um, so think about it, the last time you used a magnifying glass when you got, when you put the object closer, then you could see even better um, what was going on there. So, uh, right, so I think that's examples of all the things you're going to need to be able to do on the practice problems here. So we've got telescopes and magnifying glasses and lenses. All right, well, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have questions.